Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be going over how I installed the Zitto hydraulic cable hybrid brake calipers. And then after we do that, we're gonna do a performance test and see if they're actually any better than the cable pull ones, pure cable pull ones that were on the bike before. Okay, so here's what I have. This is what came in the, in the package. Each one came with a, a set of hardware, like so. And they, I did buy these off AliExpress. They only took maybe two, two and a half weeks to arrive. And they were about $40 shipped. They look really nice, in my opinion. In terms of the quality, the machining. Obviously, these are aluminum bodied and they're anodized. Now, you, could have picked, you can pick from a number of colors, but I thought the purple would just be kind of kind of wild, a little bit different than what I usually do. I usually go for some more muted colors, but hey, I thought, why not? Let's try something crazy. And uh, yeah, this is, this is the brake caliper. So your cable goes in here, just like a normal caliper, and then it pulls this, this uh, lever, which pushes this rod. And I'm not totally sure, but I think these have two pistons, where, whereas your typical cable pull calipers are only gonna have one piston move. That means there's a cam here, and it only presses one side of the caliper. And I wonder if that's why you get more squeaking out of cable pull uh, calipers and disc brake setups, because this one piston is moving and it's just pushing the, the uh, rotor over rather than, being, rather than being squeezed by both sides. Now for the front, it seems pretty clear how this works. This is the kind of adapter plate mount. I'm sure there's a proper word for it that I don't know. And basically it works like this. If you want the 160 rotors, you mount it like that. And then if you have 160 rotors, I should say, and then this mounts like that. On the other hand, if you have 140 millimeter rotor, you would flip this mount over and then that brings these mounting points lower to adapt for the 140 millimeter rotor. So we have 160, so it says 160, it'll go like that, same as this original one. Now they are a bit different shape. This one's quite a bit thicker, so I'll go ahead and go with this one. The back is slightly more confusing though, because this is the first time I've ever done this. Um, I'm not really sure how this one's supposed to work. It doesn't mention 160, it mentions 140, or excuse me, 160, but it doesn't mention 140. So the first thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is get this cable out of here. Oops. Okay, to be thorough, I think we should check the weights and see if we're gonna be gaining or losing any weight. They feel pretty much the same. Here's the original Decode R front with its mount. It is 171 grams. And let's take the new Zitto with its mount, 164. So almost the same, well, eight grams lighter actually for the hydraulic caliper and the rear with its mount, 162, so pretty much the same. So it looks like we'll be saving 16 grams. So practically nothing, but at least we're not gaining weight going to this caliper. Here's the hardware that came with each of the calipers. Kind of strange that this one came with all of these. This is a little bit different length. These are a little bit different. These are different. These are different. And then this one comes with one long one, two, medium and two of these countersink ones. So a little strange. Here's the originals that came off of this caliper. Now they're not going to be, they're not going to be the same length because this uh, adapter is a little bit thicker than the new one. So uh, if anything, we'll probably need a slightly shorter set than these. So if I look at it and say, well, okay, what's well, a little bit shorter than these, but quite close, it's probably going to be these two. That's probably what we're gonna go with. So let's try that. Honestly, I don't know what these are for. I do know what that's for. So let's go ahead and uh, install. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Should we put on the, oh, of course, we will need to. What am I talking about? We are going to need to uh, mount the plate onto the caliper before putting the whole assembly onto the frame because if you put this onto the frame, you won't be able to access this bolt. Uh, to attach the, the mount. So let's go ahead and dry fit it. 
and take a look at uh, how this is going to go. So uh, this is going to mount like that and this is going to mount like that. So I'll just hold these together like that and head back over to the desk. All right, we're still holding these like this, so let's go ahead and bolt the plate onto the cow upper. Now that's gonna use these little countersunk bolts. Now these are pretty small, so I don't think they're gonna need a ton of torque and I don't have a torque wrench and it doesn't even say, I don't think, it says something, but I don't, it's not really clear what the torque rating is. So I'm just giving it a good and snug, but nothing crazy because they're pretty small. Okay. Now let's head over to the, to the bike and install the caliper. We are going to have to go ahead and remove this red, um, spacer. And now we have to be very careful not to squeeze the, the calipers. All right, back over here at the bike. Now I'm going to go ahead and attempt to install the caliper. I'm putting, putting it on just like that. It's a little bit tight getting this bolt in here. In fact, it's really tight. Interesting. That's quite interesting. I, I think you may actually have to put this in before you mount. Yeah, <laughs> that's a strange design. So we need to put this bolt in, then mount this, and it, then it's going to be kind of captured. Kind of weird. Let me go do that and I'll come back. There we go. That only took a minute, but now it's kind of captured in there. I feel like that's a, a, not a great design maybe. Now, of course, this bottom one, you don't have to worry about that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install this, putting the pads over the rotor. I'm turning the bottom one in by hand right now. And I'll go ahead and grab this hex wrench to just try to get this started. There it goes. They do have a little bit of Loctite or, or some kind of locking compound already on these new bolts. All right. Now, before I, I tighten these completely down, usually the procedure to uh, align your, your uh, rotors is to pull the brake lever and then tighten these down and that'll kind of center, center the rotor. So I'm going to get it a little bit snug, but not all the way so that it will have a little bit of space to shift. And then while it's tightened, while you're squeezing, you go ahead and finish tightening down the bolts, locking in the location that it's at. This one's a little bit tricky to get to. And in fact, it's <clears throat> pretty hard to turn. It's so tight, I'm actually not able to turn it with just my thumb anymore. So I'm gonna use this trick to get a little bit more force. Actually, I may even have a better tool. Let me see. Yeah, check this out. I haven't got to use these too much, but Capri Tools sent me these for free just to, they said just use them in your videos. So perfect occasion. I think that's good. I still want it to be able to move a little bit. Let's see if we can get this in here. Maybe I, sh I probably should have done this before actually mounting the caliper. Hopefully I can still do it though. It's a little bit frayed, which may maybe give me, might give me some trouble here. All right, what I ended up doing is actually unscrewing this adjuster and putting it on the cable. Hopefully you can see that. And then I'm going to hopefully be able to, and interestingly, there's two. I feel like this second one over here might be more appropriate, actually. Uh, I'm not sure why there's two, so if anybody knows, 
please do let me know. So I'm going to try to do it like this. There we go. I think that might just work. All right, it's taken a little bit of fighting, but I think I just about got it. I should have probably just taken the caliper off and done it like that. So, oh, that's the adjustment. There it is. That's the locker. See, I was complaining before um, that I didn't think there was a locking mechanism. That's the locking mechanism. Okay, cool. So now I just have to be really careful not to strip this thread. So I'm trying to bend this into place where it's, it's threading correctly. There we go. That feels good. There we go. It's going in nicely. Now I'm going to try to, I want to seat this in. So, um, let me see if I can pull this cable housing a little bit. It's moving very slightly. <laughs> All right, after some wrestling with it, I was able to get the cable housing uh, down a little bit and it's seated nicely now. So now I'm just going to hook up the, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and hook up the cable. And by the way, these calipers came with zero instructions in the box or any note to go to a website or anything like that, unless I misplaced it or didn't see it, but I didn't see anything. So. Probably you could go on their website. Maybe there's some instructions. I didn't do that, but, and I think we're pretty much ready. So I am going to pull the front like so. There we go. And then I'm going to tighten these down using this nice T, T style hex wrench. So it's, it, to be honest, it's pretty darn hard to get in here. Um, that's kind of not great. Um, I can, if I didn't have this Capri tool or another hex, uh, that would be pretty hard actually. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and pull that tight and try my best to wiggle in here. I wonder like, yeah, let me do the bottom one first. Cause that one's easy. Okay. Now I don't see a torque rating on it either. I guess that would be by the bike manufacturer or the fork manufacturer, but I'm just gonna go good and snug as I call it. And the, this one is nearly impossible to get to, unfortunately. Okay, I think I found a way this is gonna work. I'm using this hex wrench that has a ball on the end. So that kind of give, allows you some different angles. So I can get that in there at an angle. Now let me pull the caliper again and I am turning it now. Now I'm gonna use my combo wrench like I was before, and that should allow me to torque this down. Now it's a little bit of a handful to do all this. I'm pulling the brake with one hand, and I'm, whoops. See what I mean? Okay, let's try something else. I'm going to put a zip tie up on my caliper to hold it, because I don't have a free hand. Okay, what I did up here is I simply squeezed my brake caliper pretty tight and then I put a zip tie around it to keep it that way. That way I have my hands free for tightening that bolt. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, like I said, I'm using this uh, ball end Allen key, which is a pretty common thing. It's not like that's some kind of exotic piece. And then over here, I'm using a, a standard combination wrench to give, give myself a bit more torque. So this is definitely a, a finicky operation. It also kind of really makes it hard to guess how much torque you are applying. Um, really hard because you know, you have a lot of things going on here. You have an, a funny angle. You have now this wrench adding a whole lot extra torque. So, you know, you gotta be very careful doing this type of thing that you're not over tightening it. I don't think I am. I'm, I'm purposely holding it pretty down low here so that I don't add like way too much torque. Okay, it really didn't feel that tight yet. Still not that tight. Okay, now I think it's getting close to bottoming or coming down to a tight position, I should say, whoops. That wasn't because it was a lot of torque right there. That was just because this ball socket's barely in the, in the socket and just slipped out. Okay, that feels 
pretty tight. Okay, I think we're good. All right, so I think we're pretty much done other than my end piece here. So let's uh, take the zip tie off. Let's just give it a spin. Okay, it's definitely working. Now they may need some time to break in. These are new pads too. It came with the pads pre-installed. Doesn't feel super silky smooth or anything. Um, feels pretty much the same. Now I have heard of what's called compressionless cable cables in cable housing, I guess. Uh, I've never used it and I didn't do that in this case, so that may help too. Okay. Hey, it works though. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the back after I put this little end piece on. All right, let's go ahead and start on the back. First thing again, I'm gonna take the cable off. Now on the back, the frame bolts that connect to the mounts come from the bottom here. Okay, this is a pretty long bolt as you can see because it needs to go all the way through the frame member and up into that mount. Now here's the uh, mount and here's the caliper. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt these together the same way as I did uh, the other one. And if you're unsure on which way they go, of course the, the brand is gonna be on the outside so people can see it. And that should slide on just like that. That looks like a pretty good fit. I'm just making sure that the top of the rotor is is completely covered by the brake pads and it is so that looks pretty good but this time I'm going to be a little bit smarter and I'm going to go ahead and route the cable before before I um, mount the brakes this actually this rear one seems like it's going to be easier and again I, I don't know if it matters but I'm going to use this other hole because it seems like it's more in line with where this cable is going to sit so I'm simply going to unscrew this adjuster and while I have it unscrewed I'll, I'll thread that through there if I can yep oops and then that through there screw that in there we go now I think we're ready to bolt it on already. That was actually way easy. Here's the original two bolts and here's the new ones. They're pretty much very similar in length. Almost exactly the same. So I'll go with the new ones. It feels like this is actually going to be quite a bit easier than the front just due to how the, uh, the bolts are accessed. Okay, got the back one started. And I got the front one started. Same as the, uh, the other, I don't wanna tighten them down all the way. In fact, I wanna leave it where a little bit loose so the caliper can float around a little bit like that. See how it's moving a bit? That way when I squeeze the, when I get this cable on and I squeeze the caliper, I can tighten these down thus centering, centering the pads and the caliper. So first I need to loosen this up. Okay, I did the same thing as I did on the fronts. I used a zip tie to squeeze a lever, so now I should be able to go ahead and tighten these bolts down, thus locking in the centered state. Now this plate is also aluminum, so don't go crazy tightening it down. You can obviously strip an aluminum thread with a steel bolt. I don't know how to explain how tight. I've never, I don't think I've ever stripped anything or done anything wrong with this type of thing, but yeah, if you have, if you're unsure, you should ask somebody or get a torque wrench 
maybe go on their website. It, it, it even You could even email them if it doesn't mention anywhere how tight it needs to be. For me, I've been doing this a long time and I'm pretty confident I'll get it right. It's tight, but it's not crazy tight. Just like that. Okay, so that one should be done. Let's go ahead and take off the zip tie. Well, actually, I think it needs a little bit of adjustment. Um, yeah. So, I'm gonna ride it around a bit like this before I mess with it anymore. But they are both installed, and tomorrow I'll check it out a little bit closer. So, see you tomorrow. So there's one more thing I want to tell you about the installation. I was having trouble where it seemed like no matter what I did, no matter how I tightened down the caliper, I was getting some rubbing on the rotor. So what I eventually figured out the cause was, at least I still believe the cause was, is I was using the washers that came with this bolt set and those washers were lock washers and lock washers are basically kind of a spiral washer and I think what was happening is when I was tightening them down, it was tilting the whole rotor just a little, little bit. And what I, the reason I think that is because I noticed when I tightened it down the last little bit, the whole rotor tilted, kind of like that, just a tiny bit, just the smallest amount. And so when I took those bolts out and I took those lock washers out and I used my old bolts and tightened it down, it worked fine. It, it didn't move at all at that last bit. So anyway, that was my experience with it. Um, I ended up going with my original bolts that came with my other calipers and they're working just fine and now it's not rubbing at all and it sounds great. Okay, so I've actually been riding the bike for I guess about two weeks now, mostly short trips. I haven't done anything too big yet, but I've definitely got a chance to use the brakes and try them and kind of break them in in fact. And braking in is true. It's a real thing with, with um, disc brakes and definitely these were no different. At the beginning they really didn't stop that well but also my cable pull ones when I first got this bike, even though it was used, I think it was barely ever used, it also didn't stop that well. So it took a few rides, maybe a couple rides, to really get them where they are biting, biting nice and strong. And I gotta say right off the bat, they are not actually biting or stopping. It doesn't feel like any more powerfully, powerfully, any more with any more power than the original cable pull single piston calipers were. Now these are dual pistons, I should, I should add to that point. These, this has two pistons that move together to squeeze in on that rotor, whereas the original ones only had one piston moving, just actually pushing the rotor a little bit over into the other one. So these should be better. They have hydraulics, so they should have better modulation, and it has two pistons coming together. But in fact, real world riding, I can't really tell a difference, neither in modulation or raw stopping power. I guess if I really think about it, maybe these have a little bit better modulation, but it's it's so minor. I I don't think I don't know if it's in my head or, or not, but it's really no difference. If I were just uh, didn't know any better, I wouldn't know what caliper I have on the bike. Now, there's one thing that a lot of folks say is you can get the uh, compressionless housing, and that'll make the big difference. So maybe, but. Let's go ahead and talk about the performance. So I'll put a little window up here and you can see me doing the braking performance test. What I did is I did, first I rode with the original cable calipers. I went out to a road near my house, a trail near my house in fact, and I put a stick down on the, on the road. I got up to 30 kilometers an hour and I tried my best from the hoods, not, not from the drops, but from the hoods. And the reason why is because usually I'm in my hoods, so I thought, you know what, let's uh, do what I normally do, the most realistic braking test I'll be on my hoods probably. So um, yeah, 30 to zero as fast as I can and I did it six times uh, with the original calipers and I measured the three best ones which was 24 feet, 24 feet, and 20 feet. And I don't know how that last one was 20 feet, I don't know if maybe I stopped a hair early or what, but so it's 24, 24, and 20. And it felt pretty strong. They really felt like they were biting really strong and it felt like the limiting factor was this rear wheel. Now this rear wheel is a 32 millimeter and up front I have a 35 and it's also a bit worn out. It's time for a new one. In fact, I have a, a new 35 I'm gonna put on here. But anyway, it, my, maybe it was my, my, my skill, you know, locking the back brake up. I tried not to. I tried to kind of put my weight to the back to prevent that, but you know, it takes practice. So 
Anyway, end of the day, the best I was able to get, even though I ride this bike a lot, was 30 kilometers an hour to zero um, and 24, 24, and 20. Then I installed these calipers, which you, you just seen the video, and I rode around for two weeks. You know, and they got stronger and stronger. I still think maybe it has some more braking in to do, but I'm not sure. I've rode quite a bit now, so I wouldn't think so. And they are biting quite strong. But anyway, today I went out and I tested them. Uh, and it wasn't as good, actually. So let me think, what were the numbers? I got 26, the first one. Uh, the three. So, okay, by the way, I only got four runs on these ones because my lock, uh, my cable lockdown bolt came loose at the fourth try. So I didn't, it's not quite fair. It's not quite, you know, apples to apples, but you know, it is what it is. And this isn't like a scientific test. It's just a kind of a real world, just gut feeling test. So I got four runs with it. Uh, the best three was 26, 24 and 23, if I remember correctly. So slightly higher numbers by maybe a foot. I know for you, for you metric friends, uh, a foot, something like that, maybe. Um, I don't know why I, I, I know why I used feet. It's because my measuring tape that's that long, I don't have in metric, so I used feet. Anyway, um, these actually stopped slightly worse than my other ones, and I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it was just on the day I wasn't performing as good, or maybe the road surface was a little bit different, or maybe the tires were slightly more worn, or maybe that cable was slipping before I knew it was slipping, reducing my braking power a little bit. It's not a big difference. I mean, you're only talking, I don't know, I didn't average out the numbers, but you're only talking a foot or two difference if you were to average it, I suppose. Um, maybe if I break these in more, they'll catch up as well. My gut feeling is riding them, there's really no difference. They stop fast, they stop pretty good when you really put a lot of power into it. Um, so did the other ones. And I think the biggest difference between, because I've rode some full hydraulic brake, I've never owned a fully hydraulic drop bar bike before, but I've rode some before. And I think the biggest difference, as most people do say, is really the modulation. And so if you're going down like a, a mountain road, that modulation would be really nice. And you just don't really get it with these, or in my experience anyway, or the standard cable pull cheapo calipers. They just kind of, it's more on or off and I mean it's okay it's not to say you can't use them I I did go down some mountain roads in Colorado with the originals and they worked they're okay um, I really think a lot of it with the hydraulic brakes is just your preference does it feel silky smooth and nice and make you feel confident anyway what am I rambling about would I get these if I could do it again I'm not sure it costs 40 42 dollars it's kind of on the edge for me. I do think they look cool, so that's one thing. It definitely adds a, a unique look to the bike. People notice it and, you know, it's a trick hook in part. Um, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, because I ride this bike a lot to the grocery store and being trick looking isn't necessarily a good thing when you have your bike locked up while you're inside. So I, I like it though. It makes me feel good just to see it. I think it looks cool, so when I see it, uh, it makes me a little bit happy. So that part's good. Um, the modularity and, and feel, it's about the same. The power, I would say, is about the same. But there is one thing that this is a clear winner in, and that is the squeaking. I always had squeaking with my single piston cow, uh, cable pole disc caliper. No matter what I did, the front and the back would squeak. And I tried adjusting it, and I tried doing this and that, and it was always squeaking. The only thing I didn't try to do, which may, may have been the difference, is uh, a different pad. I don't know what pads they had on them and I don't even know what pads these have on, on here. But I do know as soon as I put these on, I never heard a squeak, not a single squeak. Totally quiet, which actually means a lot to me because it's just not very cool when you're rolling up somewhere, you know, around other people and you're like, weak, 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 weak. You know, sounded like your, your bike is some junk or you don't know how to set it up right or something like that. So I, if anything, the value is in the squeak the quietness of it. The other thing I guess you can speak about is the durability and, and longevity of these calipers compared to the other. And I really don't know because I've only had them a couple weeks. So I can't say if I were to guess the other ones might be more durable and longer lasting just because it's mechanical here. It's fluid and you know, it seems like to me a seal might be more likely to leak than a cam failing. Of course a cam can fail too or seize up and stuff like that, but these can seize up as well. So 
you know, I, I don't, I've never done any testing. I don't have enough experience to say, but I would guess that these are going to be a little bit less reliable and probably not last as long without servicing. But that said, I'm not too worried about the, that either. I'm not doing like the race across America or the silk road race or something like that. Silk mountain road race. Um, you know, if they fail, it's not a big deal. It's the biggest ride I'm doing is like a hundred miles. And you know, if one fails, I could probably limp home with the, just, just a single caliper. I'm just not really that worried about that happening. So, um, I think that's about all I have to say about them. Like I said, in the other part, the weight is the same performance stopping is the same. Um, yeah, it's really not that big of a difference. The only big difference is they're quiet and they kind of look cool. So, um, maybe if I get the, uh, compressionless cable, uh, hoses or cable, um, outside, I can't I'm not thinking words today. Anyway, they could probably be a bit better, but I don't think I'm going to do that because they're good enough for, for what I use this bike for, which is just here in Florida. I think it's actually fine. I probably won't, um, I probably won't bother. It would be interesting if I take this bike to Georgia and really test these brakes. If I do that, I'll let you guys know. Either I'll make a whole video or I'll put it down in the comments. But that would be kind of interesting to see um, how they handle that. But um, so overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the calipers. I wouldn't say it's like a great buy. It wouldn't be the first thing I would upgrade. And, and the other thing I guess to consider is there's a huge variety of quality within the cable pole spectrum. So even though these are hydraulic cable hybrids, it doesn't mean that a full hydraulic, a full cable brake might not be better. I know there's some really trick and expensive, nice, uh, pure cable pull um, calipers that would probably outperform these. Yeah, and there might be better hybrid ones as well. These were about as cheap as you can possibly get at $40 off AliExpress. So um, at the end of the day, should you buy the Zittos? If you want to easily reduce the noise, if you just want something to look cool, yes. Otherwise, maybe you should consider saving your money for even better, either cable or hydraulics, uh, hy hydraulic cable hybrids, or just go full hydraulic if you really want to spend a lot more money. But for this bike, it's actually pretty good. This is a budget bike. You know, by the way, if you haven't seen the other video, I only paid 170 bucks for this bike. And so I think these are, are pretty fitting for the bike overall. I'm a little conflicted though, if it's actually worth it. So let me know what you guys think. Is this uh, brake upgrade worth it for this bike or should I have saved up my money and got something even better? And what do you think about the color and the style? I'd like to know that too. Anyway, that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you next one. Bye.